This is Truth Be Told. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Truth Be Told. We're gonna be continuing our conversation on relationships. This is part two. Guys, we're gonna dive in deep about sex. We're gonna talk about marriage. We're gonna talk about communication. We are gonna talk about everything. So, about <laughs> Wait, can yeah. I ask a question so, to you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you were talking, I, I feel like maybe some singles would love to hear the answer to this. You what? said that you've had like year long <laughs> relationships, like, yeah, like years, very serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I know a lot, of, I feel like a lot of people get into relationships and years pass and they are like, I can't break up with someone because because of time. I've yeah. like committed so much time. So I would yeah. love to hear like yeah. how you, I don't know, if you ever felt that or like yeah. what, like how you came mm-hmm. to the place of like breaking up with them and. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, you well, know. as I'm like just going back because it's easy to flash because again, like because I was such like a years, I, I can count like on one hand, like the boyfriends that yeah. I've had. Um, so I think looking back at it, I feel like some things were just organic. I, I never felt like um, there was one relationship where it was just non negotiable. He cheated on me. And that was just for me. And I'm not saying this for anyone because there may be people out there that are married and experience this. And I don't want to negate your experience. You've probably walked through forgiveness and and are still in that relationship. But for me, um, dating someone and having that experience to me only made me feel like if this is happening when we're dating, then I I can expect this in marriage. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, just lying or different character things. Because I feel like it's very hard to just lump in into a couple of months someone's character yeah. I think it takes a little time to spend with them so for me you know and in marriage too I mean there are things that come up in marriage that you have to learn to work through and you can't just be like peace out I'm out like right. we're breaking up like you have to learn to work through those things so for me the way I approach every relationship was not like okay they messed up now I'm gonna think and put myself on this high pedestal like I'm perfect and like just break up with this person but it was patterns of behavior that were yeah. either self-destructive mm-hmm. that were um, disrespectful mm-hmm. that were just care character things that to me were like, okay, I've given X amount of time. Mm -hmm. This is really who you are right now. And at this point, like, and of course having conversations with them about it. And if it's not changing, then there's a moment where you have to say again, like, this is my value. Mm -hmm. This is what I deserve. This is my worth. And, and it's not easy, you guys, like breaking up with Mm -hmm. someone. Like, I'm not trying to say like, oh man, I had it. No, I no. cried my yeah. eyes out. I did the Ben and Jerry's. They were my husbands for a while. You know what I mean? I did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Loyal husbands, you know? Um, and, you know, Terry Garcia, hey, sponsor Ooh. us. Uh, but, but you know what I mean? Like, but I, I had to really say, hey, Marquita, like, you deserve better. And I will tell you, it wasn't always easy in that season for me because I was still figuring myself out. Yeah. So, again, I don't want to seem like I had it all together and I was totally empowered. Right. But right. I ha- I really had those moments where like, no, you're better than this and yeah, you deserve yeah. better. Well, and so I had to have those difficult conversations. And yeah. honestly, most of the relationships I broke, I broke up with them. Yeah, there was one relationship that was just kind of mutual, but you know, I just was like, no, I'm better than this. And then also giving myself a sabbatical of like yeah. just not dating That's and like healing in between those relationships. Because yeah. when you yeah. jump from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship, yeah. it is very difficult because you're taking that baggage unless mm-hmm. you've released it. So yeah. I would always yes. encourage you out there, like if you're dating yeah. or you have an experience or a relationship, I would encourage you to take some time yeah. to really just kind of reset refresh, heal from whatever you need to heal before jumping into the next relationship. There's this quote that I love, which is exactly on that. It says, if you don't heal from what cut you, you'll bleed over someone who never hurt you. And so it's like you you take your hurt and your pain that Mm -hmm. someone else caused into your next relationship Mm -hmm. and you begin to spill out all these insecurities and hurt over someone who has never even hurt you. And so that would be my thing as well. Like if I could give any single person any advice, it would be get as free as you can possibly be as a single person because it gets magnified in marriage. It doesn't get healed in marriage oh my God. Um, Absolutely. but yeah. there are also it's kind of like shrek with the with the you know onion layers <laughs> there is only a certain amount of healing i believe that you can get to um mm-hmm. if it was a relationship that hurt you then i believe it will also yeah. be a relationship that helps heal you yeah. Yeah. so, so again like you can get to a certain level of healing which you sh- everyone should pursue before marriage but then there will be trigger points in marriage mm-hmm. or relationship that mm-hmm. gets pressed and you need to just realize oh this isn't you this is me and my past issues that i'm yeah. still working through and give yourself yeah. grace for that and 
just be vulnerable with whoever you're in relationship with. Yeah. And I think that most people, especially if you're not blaming them for something they didn't do, will track with you and they'll walk that through mm -hmm. with you and you'll end up being yeah. such a freer and um, just a better spouse, really. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. a more gracious spouse and a more confident mm -hmm. um wife or husband so. yeah and that's the same thing like even like with divorce when I see people it's like so quick to marry and then quick to divorce and it's like of course I don't know everyone's situation but there are some people in my lives that that I've walked through them with that and and some of the things I've noticed is that same thing it's like the grass is not always greener on the it's, other side like no. you being married and thinking okay I'm gonna I'm gonna get divorced from this person I'm gonna go find someone else who's better or who's perfect mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you have the ideal idea with like marriage takes patience mm -hmm. it takes forgiveness and it's it's repeated you guys because we're not perfect yeah. and it's like yeah. and no one is and it's like the the first thing I I think of when I think about someone like ready to get rid of a relationship and even going back to that question you asked me yeah. I stopped and said is there any part that I have to play in this yeah mm -hmm. like is there anything yeah. that I'm bringing am I showing up as my best self yeah and then I I look at me first before I'm like Okay, wait, we yeah, need to, you know, <laughs> exactly. Because of the thing is, it's like, it's so often very easy to be like, you change yeah. and then I'll change. Right. Yeah. Or you fix this about yourself and then maybe I'll recognize that there's something wrong with right. me. But it's yeah. like, and, and, and having problems or things that you need to work out is not bad. Like, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. like I had a lot of pain. I had a lot yeah. of trauma from losing my brother to my dad leaving me at the same time and him cheating on my mom with a younger woman and the, and mm -hmm. walking through depression and anxiety and like partying so much mm -hmm. and like all yeah. these different things because I did not grieve the yeah. loss of my brother and my dad not being mm -hmm. a part of my life. And it was very, very, very difficult. I went through such years and years of deep depression and yeah. anxiety. And it's like, I had no business being in any kind of relationship with anyone when I really need to be in a relationship with myself yeah. and healing and yeah. walking yeah. through that yeah. journey. Yeah. And, and then the interesting thing is once I walked through that process, like you were saying, freedom, there was so much mm -hmm. um, things that I saw which more, with mm -hmm. more clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. even bad relationships. And, like, it would be true to say that even the worst of breakups is going to be so much easier than a divorce. Exactly. Yeah, Ooh. that's so good. So, and cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheaper. Sure. And yeah. less collateral damage. Because if you start having kids, I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what I think about, like, when I'm in the relationships that I know need to maybe come to an end, mm. but I don't want to end them and I don't want to hurt people, I'm yeah. like... Oh, uh, way more people are going to get hurt if I it's let this keep so going true. than if yeah, I yeah. end it now. Yeah, and that's so, good. Yeah. so true. So, what are y'all's tips on um, successful marriage? Like, what were your top three tips of things that you could give of like someone maybe who's struggling through something or just needs a little bit of encouragement? Like, what do you? What have you learned? Is like your top three tips? Mm -hmm. And then, like, I would love to hear like what are some of the things that you're like, hey, like this is what I would look for in, or this is what I'm looking for in a significant yeah. other, or what I would hope they would be like. Well, I mean, I think, you know, kind of just going back, piggybacking off of what we were just talking about, there's something that I've noticed with my family, but now I'm noticing it with my husband, mm -hmm. which is, I've always called it, like, the sin of familiarity, and really, like, what I mean about by that is that you always for me at least, I hurt the people that are closest to me when I'm hurting, Yeah, yeah you know? True. And, like, there was something that, you know, my husband and I walked through recently, like, we're walking through a grieving season, and I was just being nasty to him, mm -hmm. you know? And he was like, do you mean this? Like, all, you know, like, he's like, you've never said this kind of stuff to me. And I realized, I'm like, wow, I just think you're, you're a safe person to kind of, like, cut into yeah, right now because yeah. I'm hurting, yeah, you know? And so I need real. you to not take anything that I'm saying right now, like, yeah. super seriously, seriously yeah. because mm -hmm. I don't mean it. I just, like, need to get this out, and this the, you're right there. And But yeah. as soon as I acknowledge that, it just stopped, Yeah, you know? Yeah. and But I've noticed I've, I've done that with my parents. Like, you know, when you're a teenager and you're just a jerk to your <laughs> mom and dad because you're like, well, they're, they actually love me, and I, I love them, but... You know, yeah. I can be a jerk to them, and I know they're not going to leave me. Yeah. You know, so in a way, it is actually, like, it's, it's my it's love like that makes me mean. Oh you know? <laughs> but, 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 yeah, so I guess, like, tip number one would be, like, know that um, 
you have to take everything with a grain of salt for sure, but also just be self-aware. Like, yeah. am, do I mean this or not? And some things are never worth saying. Some things are never yeah, worth yeah. saying, even if they're true. Yeah. Like, you can't take certain things yeah. back. But also yeah. just being on top, I mean, I know men, like, really do find value in being physical. And, like, more and more, I think as, you know, I'll, I'll have been married now eight years this year. And, I know. Yes. Woo, boom. <laughs> um, but... Like, as time goes on, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, we get busy. I'm like, I don't care as much about sex as I used to. Yeah, you it know, change like, sometimes. I'm just saying, be thankful I you know. can have it. Ah! I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> for real, but, but like, I actually have to be, like, really Priorities intentional. Priorities change a little bit. Priorities now. change, <laughs> for sure. Grass is green. No, I don't know about that. But <laughs> like, not with that no, one. The grass is green. The grass is <laughs> actually sex greener is over yeah. here. Yeah, it's well, it's I'm green. just on it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty I want to make so many <laughs> jokes about I don't know anyway so um but yeah so like just being intentional and being on top of of your like sex life I think is really important yeah in on, top of, yourself, on top of your sex life on top on top of your sex you. life they do have this 80-20 rule you know that's kind of in a lot of different areas of life but one of it is in um physical relationships within your marriage so they say that a woman needs 80% emotional connection in order to give 20% physical connection. Ooh. And they say that men need 80% physical connection in order to give 20% emotional connection. And so it's one of these things where it's like, I find that when my husband is feeling disconnected from me, I'm like, oh, I know he needs sex. Oh, I know, yeah, like, yeah, that's good. And yeah. even if I'm that's not good. feeling it, because maybe the connection, because I yeah. need the emotional stuff to be yeah, strong yeah. before I can like yep. engage with the physical stuff yep, yep. like mm -hmm. being aware of that I'm like oh you know what if I need to bring something up or if we are gonna have like a disagreement or stuff like let's have sex first yeah, yeah. <laughs> real, because that's so gonna real, help real. you come into this mm -hmm. like feeling connected to me yep. and that's gonna make me feel connected to you Absolutely. but I will say a lot of times sex, even within marriage, can be used as manipulation. Yes. And yeah. I would just say whatever you do, do not use sex as a weapon. That's so Because good. it is, like, yeah. such a real thing. Mm, it, um, it can be one of the greatest strengths of your marriage or the greatest weaknesses, Destroy, yep. destroyers so of your true, marriage. Yeah. So, so get true. healthy in that area. And, and sometimes, like, you have sex as a wife. Uh, because you're being a good wife. Exactly. Like, yes, not because no. you want to have sex. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you're playing that better at it, too. And, and, yeah. no, it's so real. real. And you know what? I, re like, I remember like some certain moments like, man, I'm really not feeling it. Like You just yeah. don't have the energy. Or, and it's not that you're not attracted to no. him. My husband is smoking hot, you guys. Like I am so attracted to him. But just as a woman, it's sometimes hormonal. Sometimes it could be just oh, different yeah. things. Yeah. Girl, I yes. would go put on my sexiest thing. I will stand in the mirror and say, you got this. You can do it. Go get them. And, and, and here's the thing. You never regret having sex. Sex when you have it with your husband. It's That's true. true. I've like never, out. dude. Never, you're, exactly. Yeah. You're like, you're like, it's gym, hard to get in the gym. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I never end up having sex with my husband. And be like, man, I regretted having sex. No, you don't. No, but sometimes so you just true. gotta throw yourself in the game, and then once you're in the experience, you're like, oh my gosh, oh, I, I was yeah. so stupid. I and it's just so <laughs> okay for your sex life to change. It goes through seasons. Like when you have yeah. kids, like it's real that you I'm sometimes you don't want to have yeah. sex. Yeah. And go for yeah. the O, oh, guys. Like, don't, like, get, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it because I read a book. We're here. I read a book last year. It was, like. Educate yourself. It was a Rachel Hollis book. It was, I don't know. I don't go remember which. Face. I think maybe it was that, apologizing. but it might have been another, it might have been another one of her books. But, yeah, it was one of those. And she was talking about how, you know, she used to just do it to do it and not really engage, mm. you know, and, and just kind of start. It just became this, like, uh, I don't know plug-and-play thing for her and her husband, and so she decided, okay, plug and no, no, well, no, we're not going to keep talking about it. Uh, so, but she was like, okay, I'm actually going to, okay, like, okay. we're going to go Removing for it myself. every single time. I'm going to try to enjoy myself. Like, we're going to yes. have sex. Like, I'm going to try to enjoy myself. Yes. And that actually made everything so much better, like, yeah. for their marriage and all of that. So, and I don't know what yeah. husband wouldn't want their wife to, like, enjoy, enjoy it, it oh and be gosh. fully into it. Absolutely. So if it requires a conversation, like, hey, I like this, I don't like this, yeah, can we yeah. try that? Yeah. I think, like, my husband and I do a checkup. Sorry, babe, if this is too vulnerable for you. <laughs> but we do, like, we have a check-in, like, every six months, and we're like, you know, how's our sex life? Is That's there anything great. that you want to try? Is there something that you don't want to do that you're not enjoying?
joint. And we just kind of have a really open conversation about our sex life. I love it. Most 99% of the time he's like, I'd like more. Yeah. And I'm like, of course you would. Every man. You would, would like that. more yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's really healthy. <laughs> yeah. Real. Oh, oh my gosh. Real. No, I love that. Like, honestly, I feel like that's such a great healthy tip of having, because I feel like people have conversations about, okay, what are our dreams? What are our goals? But no one's like, what are our goals and dreams and sex? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. What, what do we want our sex life to look like, you yeah. know, in this season? You and know? I will and say, change. a lot of women actually maybe experience pain after they've had children in that area. And so oh, um, there's yeah. a good healing process in that. And just be patient with that. But mm -hmm. if it continues, like, please see a doctor because it's actually not meant to keep hurting. Yeah. Um, but I, I actually have a lot of friends who are like, oh, I don't do it anymore because it's painful. Oh, and wow. I'm like, oh, that's a big deal. Like, that, like there's no shame in that. Like, get... Get some help in that yeah. area because, like, that's yeah. going to be a glue in your marriage. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's so a cool. great place to get as much help as you can. Yeah, because so. yeah. Yeah. there's so much intimacy that happens, and like, it's like this interesting thing of like, um, like when you are intimate with your husband. I just feel like it's like something that you can't mirror even as close as your best friends or even when you're hanging out and spending quality time or doing things together. There's nothing like when you're intimate with your yeah. husband that just kind of is like, I don't know. Because there's no shame in it. Either. Yeah. And there's it's no, like, and it's so, yeah. there's so much yes. freedom and safety yeah. in it yeah. too, you know, yeah. I don't know. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tip two. Tip yeah. Do yeah. it. Do yeah. it. <laughs> Did you have any? Well, my main thing would be communication is key, like, in sex, in marriage, in life. Like, communicate. Yeah. If you're single, communicate your feelings. Communicate mm -hmm. where you're at. What, like, if you're interested in someone, just be bold. Like, it's your time and your emotions. In marriage, communicate. Like, hey, if you're PMSing, let your husband know. Don't let him find out by you throwing mean words in his face. Like, <laughs> It's funny because my husband can tell when I'm, like, exactly X amount of days out from getting my period. He's, my like, husband, he's like, hey, he's it. like, are you, are you, are you, is this many days left? And I'm like, you're right. And I'm Get like, for me. and I vocalize where I'm at, though, because guys aren't mind readers. And I would also say, like, let go of your expectation for perfection from you or from your spouse or yeah, who you're in a relationship yeah. with. Because... I think walking into a marriage, or my marriage now, I had expectations that things would look a certain yeah. way, even, like, my sex life, mm -hmm. or, like, how our marriage dynamic looks, mm -hmm. yeah. and how we are in the house, like, my husband loves to cook, and I am so blessed, and I know that a lot of women don't Yo, have that. Really so you should have thought. <laughs> you should hear about my breakfast. <laughs> but, yeah. like... Our dynamic is so different, and I think if I went in, like, fully expecting things to look, like, a very specific way, I would not only be yeah. hurting, like, my ability to connect with my husband, but I would also be hurting our marriage because yeah. I'd be yeah. holding this expectation on him. Mm -hmm. And, like, one thing he told me, he's like, you have to stop, ex like, when we were dating, he was like, you have to stop expecting me to do what your ex-boyfriend did. Mm -hmm. He's like, because I'm not him, and, like, okay. mm -hmm. you can't hold me to that expectation. Yeah. But you also can't expect me to read your mind because that's yeah. impossible. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, like, just letting go of the expectation of perfection or that things will look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. have your standards and have, like, yeah. your... Yeah boundaries have have things in place but that doesn't mean you have expectations and I think we talked about this on a, a previous episode where like expectation on I forget what it was but just letting go of that expectation because yeah. mm -hmm. expectations it was disappointment we were talking oh, about yeah. disappointment yeah. I was like where is it <laughs> but um letting go of that expectation will also protect you from being disappointed yeah. or feeling betrayed mm -hmm. like those expectations are something that you have to deal with in your heart first yeah. before you can, like, bring someone yeah. else in. Yeah. And I would say invest Same in your marriage. Story. Like, I think about, like, people invest in their businesses. Yeah. People invest in their children. Yeah. Invest in your marriage. Yeah. So, like, my husband and I, we have this thing where we go on retreats. Like, we at least go on, like, a big retreat once a year where we go and, like, it's, like, all around marriage, all around getting tools on communication, and you know, and we yeah. and we can work some things out that maybe we might need like a third party to help us work yeah. out. Yeah, that's so great. And it's completely we don't turn our phones off. We have like a certain time where we have our phones off for X amount of the time, and we just kind of isolate ourselves in that situation, and we give ourselves a couple of days. Like mm -hmm. we had recently went on a retreat um, in in Missouri, and it was amazing, and we got some new tools for our relationship. Yeah. Always 
always open yourself to learn and work through those things. Yeah. And then also to like having like a checkup. Like I remember one of our, our, our uh, uh, spiritual leaders um, very close to us. And she was one of the women that were helping us through a season in our marriage that was very difficult. And one of the things she said is you go and you get checkups on your car. Right. Oil yeah. change. You oil yeah. change, tune up all those things. And she said, yeah. you should always have a regular person checking in on your marriage. Yes. Or like another person. Another person, like yeah. whether you're going through a counseling session or yeah. accountability, always having someone. And, and obviously, you want to make sure that it's the right person, right? Yeah. You want someone who, who actually yeah. understands what marriage is and has something that maybe you aspire, not perfection, but some someone that, that, you, uh, that has that experience that can equip you for those tools. And I will yeah. tell you, one of the best tools that we got when we were in Missouri was a new way to communicate. Like for my husband, like he, he something wasn't clicking with one of the other tools we had previously. And for some reason, this tool on communication was super helpful and pretty much so maybe it might be helpful for you guys out there. It was just like we would sit down and we would say, hey, like I would love to have a heart talk and a heart talk. We could talk about um, dreams, you know, difficult things, yeah. whatever it was. And in that yeah. moment, whoever asked to do the heart talk would be the person who would start with the conversation and they could share so their heart. And then the other person is quiet. That's yeah. key. L open your ears and they would listen and then they would repeat. Like, you know, you have to kind of say it in small little segments. Yeah. So let's say I say, hey, you know, I was really feeling frustrated yesterday about X, Y, Z. And he would say, okay, I hear you saying that you're really frustrated by X, Y, Z. And so you kind of go through that conversation. Yeah, that's so great. And it's not that you're going to get to a resolution, but those yeah. heart talks are for understanding. Yeah. 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 And you're not holding it in and you're not until holding you hit that breaking point. You're yeah. not holding it yeah. in. And, you're, and it's a healthy so way to communicate where yeah. you're not yelling at each other and looking yeah. like psychopaths and like throwing things and ah. Like, oh, you know, it's goodness. just like, it was just a clean, yeah. clear way yeah. to sit in a safe place to have a conversation. And then the person person could say, okay, are you, are you done? Yeah, I would like to share. So and then you switch yeah. the roles. Yeah. So that would be a great that's tip great. for communication if you're having difficulty talking through certain yeah. things. Yeah. But also, like, I mean, th even just defining what your family looks like versus maybe what you grew up with, too. Yes. When it comes to communication, yeah. like, yeah. my yeah. parents love them. They are New Yorkers, and yelling in my house is not, like... <laughs> It's, uncommon. <laughs> it's not uncommon, but it's also not always hostile. Yeah, it's like a it's, cultural thing. It's a cultural yes. thing, right? And so, like, we just, <laughs> we're true. like, I, when, now when I go home, I feel like I'm with some Tyrannosaurus Rexes. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> bum, 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 bum. There's no coffee in the coffee. <laughs> you know? It's like so loud. I love it. But that that's what I grew up with, right? But when my parents get into it, they get into it in terms of, like, volume. Passion. And passion. passion. There's lots of passion yeah. happening. <laughs> but when, you know, when I married my husband, he's from Texas. They're a little bit more buttoned up. Like, the first time I met his family, he was like, you're being rude. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> how? <laughs> you know? Like, I was a T-Rex or whatever. Yeah, it was T-Rex like. around. It wasn't working out. So, um, so, but I remember, like, you know, within the first couple months of our marriage, like, I raised my voice with him, and I would, like, start picking a fight, you know, in that mm. way. We, we'd never really fought that much when we were dating. But then when we got married, it just kind of changed things when we actually lived together and all this. And and I just remember he looked at me. He's like, listen, I know this is what you grew up with, but this is not going to work for me. Oh, like, I am, good. you know, like, you're you're just not going to talk yeah. to me this way. And mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. want this to be our family. Yeah. And we actually so had good. to have a lot of conversations, yeah, like, awesome. like where, you know, maybe you grew up with this and maybe you grew And I've had to do the same thing with how his family was, too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, yeah. this just yeah. isn't You're going to say how, you're new. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A new normal. Yeah. A new yeah. normal. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. One of the things for us which I love is like divorce is never an option yeah, yeah. so like we don't like I don't think we've ever <coughs> even brought that word up we don't I, say yeah. like we either. don't say no. it at all like so we know that whatever we got to figure out and however yeah. we got to figure out like one of our options is not divorce like it's yeah. not even on the table so it forces you to not even have that mm -hmm. as an escape that's route good. Yeah. Um, that's good Cause I'm a, li I'll be honest. I'm a little bit like flight, you know. Like if it's fight or flight, I'm oh, like, yeah. Yeah. oh, just get me out of here. Yeah. Like I don't want to deal with yeah. this. I want to go to a cabin in the woods all by myself, get away from my everything, my life. Um, and so I just want to kind of run away in those moments. But like it's so good to, for me personally, because I'm like, oh, like no, I didn't get to do that. Like yeah. Yeah. actually, he would allow me to 
not he would allow me, but he would actually give me that as a gift if I if I verbalized. I just need to get away. Like he yeah. would do whatever yeah. he could to give me that as a gift. Like, um, but we just never even bring up divorce. Yeah. It's yeah. never an option. Yeah, yeah. it's not um, manip- used to manipulate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I told my husband so. the only way away from me is in a coffin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, that's a true New Yorker. That's a true New Yorker. That is such a New Yorker. In a coffin. In a coffin. A coffin. <laughs> but you know, they're with adding my coffee. With my coffee. With my coffee. That was good. That was really tr- We're getting there. No, I heard they're adding a new love language, which is distance. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I love it's that it's a rumor. I know. Like, could have they chosen the Get same away concept from me. but a different love word? Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I feel like maybe <laughs> uh, space? Personal time? Yeah. Space. Or, yeah. Space. Yeah. Space. That sounds yeah. a little too I'm, I got to yeah. look more into this. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend who was very excited about it. Uh, so. Okay. Could you mention oh. Well, it's a love language for those. Like, I know you love me because you don't want to be around me. What? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Well, you said something that kind of stroke, like, another great tip is, like, Putting boundaries with in laws. <laughs> like, oh, that's real, yeah. Okay, yeah. so there is this. No comment. Okay, there is this <laughs> thing, you guys, honestly, and I'm just gonna be totally real. Okay, you you lived with your family for X amount of years. Yeah. You're yeah. in that relationship, okay? Your husband lived with that person X amount of years in that relationship. And sometimes those waters, when you come together, can get a little murky. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely highly encourage you guys having a conversation about boundaries. And I've noticed it's a lot more difficult for men who are really close with their moms than it is for, I don't know. I feel like women are a lot easier to like attach to something, but if they're really close with their dads, it's like almost like moms with their boys and girls with their dads. It's really kind of hard and you want to make sure that you're respecting and honoring each other. Yeah. And so I would say have that conversation, have that conversation with the, with the parents and make sure that, that you Mm -hmm. Are representing your household. So don't allow your spouse to communicate those things to their family. If there is an issue, you are the representative of that house and you should communicate. So for example, if my husband needs to communicate or reiterate a boundary with his parents, it's his responsible. Yeah. It's his responsibility. Oh, I Because yeah. what could happen is there could be yeah. like this weird, yeah. you know, um, you know, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like resentment like, yeah. or stuff. That tension, that, tension yeah, yeah. that can build. Yeah. So if my family has an issue with something with him, it is my responsibility to communicate. It's yeah. my responsibility like to oh, handle like that. that. Yeah. It's my responsibility to protect my husband. It's my responsibility to com- com- communicate mm-hmm. that to yeah. my family. My and it helps to keep to the too. waters very yeah. clear and okay. very defined. Yeah. You're so. like the ambassador for your family. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But exactly. That you also understand how to talk better to Absolutely. your parents. Yeah. 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 Sir, you know, like, you mean, like, okay, listen, I know yeah. he's tripping, but no, I'm just kidding. Sometimes, <laughs> but, he's great. Sometimes, but, you know, but, you know, we're keeping him up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we understand, we're but hey, up. you gotta keep yourself together. You can't go off on him, you can't go raptor on him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> T Rex, T Rex, yeah, T Rex. Oh my gosh, I love it. Do you want to give love it. me to give three tips? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, three okay. Tips. Um, three tips. I'll do it really quick for being single. Um, I it's kind of just going to reiterate some things. I had like an eight year on and again, off again relationship that was, you know, that in itself kind of explains how messy it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I took time like years to grieve that and get over that and move on. Cause I was at that place where I was like, I cannot give my heart to someone. I don't want to give my heart to someone if it belongs, if someone else is, is like still in it. And mm-hmm. so it's like getting to that place, I think, of taking time to, mm-hmm. you know, move, grieve things, grieve past relationships and become your whole full self. Like mm-hmm. once I started to grieve that, I feel like that's when I found myself and started to make healthy changes. Um, you know, those eight years were not perfect. And so just... And I want, so what I want in someone is someone who's done the same, who has done the work, who's going to come as a whole person um, and who's ready to give their heart fully to someone yeah, else, good. you know, because I'm, I mean, I'm 29, I'm in my late twenties. Like I can't expect to be someone's first girlfriend or for some, or, you know, or for someone to come as like a, a clean slate or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Cause I won't either. And so I'm looking for someone who will accept that. <laughs> um, that and I'm definitely looking for some, I think it's so important to have the same beliefs. Like yeah. I think that you have yeah. to like think so far, like long term. Mm-hmm. you can think someone's great. You can get along really well, but if like, think about like, are, can you raise kids with this person? Yeah. If you, are you going to have, are you going to be on, you know, you don't have to be mirror images of people. I'm not looking for the exact same person as 
me, uh, but someone who holds the same beliefs. So when we yeah, raise good. a family, like we're on the same page. Yeah. I don't want to have to change someone. Yeah. Um, and then the last one was, I don't want, I think it's really important to like, not just check someone's box. Like there's a lot of people probably like, I'll just, I just want to get married. And you know, I'm like, I, th- I take, took me a long time to like say those words. Like I want, I w- I'm like, it's a desire of mine to get married without it sounding so desperate. Mm. But I'm like, if I were desperate, like I'd be married. So I don't want to just get married, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to yeah. just marry someone who's like, I, I just want to get married, you yeah, know? So good. I think just patience and everything we said, there's purpose yeah. in the process and there's purpose yes. in singleness. Mm-hmm. There's purpose, 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 in all the relationships. <laughs> so yeah. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Amazing. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the purpiseness of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, subscribe. If you are not subscribed, you want to know when we're going live, when we're posting new episodes. And give us, yeah, give us a follow. Give us a like if you like this episode. And please comment below with your best tips about, you know, your whatever season it is that you're in. So whether it's singleness or whether uh, it is married or it's complicated anywhere yeah. in between <laughs> definitely follow us on instagram at truth be told show we can't wait to see you on there and we'll catch you next time Bye.